Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at function expressions in JavaScript. So uh, my name's John, uh, I'm from the website, or I'm the creator of the website caveofprogramming.com and we're continuing here our course on Node.js and JavaScript for beginners. So um, I'm going to start with you strict as always. Sometimes I forget that but really should try to remember it. And let's create a function in the most kind of basic way. So this is called a function definition, which we've already seen in this course. We write function, and let's create a function that maybe uh, just says hello. So let's write function, I'll call it greet1, round brackets and curly brackets. So um, we can use numbers in function names and variable names. We just can't start them with a number. So this is a valid function name. I'm calling it greet1 because I'm going to have another two of these. and I don't want to have to think of completely different names every time. So I can have greet1, greet2 and greet3. And let's just write console.log and we'll output hello1 here. How do I actually call this function? And when I say call the function, this is programming lingo for make the pro make the function actually execute. And the answer is we just write greet1, the name of it, two round brackets, and we should put the semicolon in really. So if I run this now, it says hello1. So we've already seen this, and this is called a function definition. Now one thing to be aware of is that so the, the Node.js interpreter or the JavaScript interpreter, whichever one you're using, should it will normally start at the top basically and read downwards so it's reading downwards it sees your function definition and eventually it comes if you've got one to a function call so now we're calling this function and by the time we do that it's already seen the definition of the function so it works however we can also in this case put the call to the function above the definition of the function so we can call the function before we've defined it, as long as we do define it in our program. Let's try that. And it actually does work. And this is called function hoisting, which is a name that I discovered recently. I didn't know it was called that, but um, this, this does actually work with a function definition. But as we'll see, it, it doesn't work with the other styles of creating a function that we're going to see. So the second way to create a function is called a function expression. We write let, we, we need a variable here essentially, which will actually be um, a reference to the function rather than just a simple value. So let's call this greet2 and I'm going to set it equal to and we need a keyword function. Then we have the round brackets as always and the curly brackets as always. And in there I'm going to do console.log hello2. So we can call that, same as before, we have the name of the function, two round brackets, and ideally a semicolon. So if I run this, it says, hello2, if you can see that. That works. However, function hoisting doesn't work with um, function expressions. It only works with function definitions. So if I try to call this function before I define it with a function expression, then I get a nasty looking error. And it says actually on the top line, it says cannot access greet to before initialization. Let's put this back down here so that it actually works. So here we've got function definition and here we've got function expression. We've got a function expression. Why is it called a function expression? Well, probably because in programming in general, an expression is something that evaluates to some value. For example, if I write two plus two, that evaluates to the value four. In this case, this expression evaluates to a function, which we can assign to a variable, and then we can call the function. So this is a function expression, whereas this is a function definition. There's another way of writing a function expression that seems to be getting more and more common. I'm seeing it a lot in 
React code. React is a framework for creating uh, basically web user interfaces. Let's take a look at that. So again, we, we have a variable to store a reference to the function. I'll call this greet3. And we set it equal to, and now instead of the function keyword, we have two round brackets, which again could accept a list of pra uh, a list of arguments. We could put a parameter list in there, and um, we have a equals sign and a sort of um, right angle bracket, sort of diamond bracket, and then we have the curly brackets. So let's put in the console dot log hello three. So to call or invoke this greet3 function, we write again greet3 and the round brackets. And if I run this, it says hello, th hello3. So there are these th three different ways of defining a function. These are three important ways of defining a function. Um, if you are a beginner, you will start to get lost just by looking at this. It's really important that you type all of this out and, you know, try it out for yourself and try to give yourself an exercise now, it, or some exercises rather. In, in each case, we could supply function parameters. We could put function parameters in the round brackets. That's where they always go. And then we could pass those to the functions in our curly brackets here when we call the functions. We'll take a look at that in the next video. But if you, th if you think you understand how this might work, then do try it out, you know, so you have to give yourself exercises of some kind. So for example, can you write a function that adds up all the numbers from one to a hundred and then just prints them out or else returns, um, the value that it's calculated, you know, give yourself, make up some silly exercises that they don't have to be anything really serious or useful but make up exercises and try to practice all of these, you know, try adding up sequences of numbers or, you know, squaring numbers like I've done here or whatever springs to your mind, converting, um, a temperature in Celsius to a temperature in Fahrenheit, converting a number of days to a number of months, whatever you like, make up exercises and try to do them. You've got to practice this stuff to learn it. So in the next video, we'll take a look at how we would handle return values and parameters with these different ways of creating functions, but do practice this or you will start to get lost. So until next time, happy coding.